This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. The bottom-up approach for creating assembly means that all the components have already been created separately, and now we're just going to combine them all into a single file and then add the additional mates to create their final assembly. To create a new assembly, there's a couple different ways to do this. The first way is to click New, Assembly, say OK. Then when you create a new assembly, the Begin Assembly Property Manager will be displayed. From here, you browse to the location where your parts are located, select your parts, and then insert them into your assembly. The other way is to create the assembly from a component and then add additional components to the assembly. That's the method I like to use a lot of times, especially if I already have the components drawn. It just makes it easier. I don't have to go and search through for just one component. So for instance, we're going to build the machine vice assembly, and we have the main part, the body, that everything else is attached to. So why not use that one to begin with? So with the part open in SOLIDWORKS, click on the downward pointing arrow next to the new icon and say make assembly from part or assembly. It's an easy way, because it already gets loaded into memory and all you have to do is bring it into your assembly. Now when you add a component into there, you can do this a couple different ways, but the first component needs to be fixed. Fixed means that it cannot move in any of the six degrees of freedom, because if that one first component in your assembly is not fixed and it can float in 3D space, the rest of the components will have to float with it, and that can cause some issues. So the best way to do this is just to select your base component in your assembly, and then just say OK. By doing that, it automatically inserts the assembly with the origin of your part matching the origin of your assembly. Your default planes line up to the default planes in your assembly. As you can see here, the right and the right are coincident. The top and the top are coincident. The front and the front are parallel. Components that are fixed cannot move. If I try and move this, it would actually say this component is fixed. It cannot be moved. And you can tell the component is fixed here in the feature manager with this F that is enclosed within parentheses. If for some reason you don't need this to be fixed, you want it to float around, Right click and say float. Now that part can float in 3D space. The F changes to a dash, which means that the location of this particular component is underdefined. And you can see that here in the status bar as well, that this component or this assembly is underdefined. This is not good. If we say fixed at this point, it's actually going to fix it to the location it's at. And that might not be where you want it to be. In fact, you look at the origin now, between the origin and the assembly, they're no longer close to each other. Same with the planes. They might not line up. So what we can do on that is change it back to float, and we can mate those points. We'll go over mates more in detail later. But now this component is mated to the origin. So I try and move it again, it's not going to be able to move. Now that we got our base component in there, now we can add additional ones. In the assembly tab of the command manager, you can say insert components. You can say insert component from the menu or from the shortcut bar. After selecting on insert components, you'll come up with the same property manager that you saw on the beginning assembly, except this time it changes to say insert component. Select browse to locate your components. If you go to open it and you don't see anything in the folder that you know their components exist, check here to make sure that it's showing parts. Now all your parts will be visible. So we can grab the first part of this and it will be the movable jaw. Select on it, say okay. 
It gets shown here and it's attached to your mouse pointer. To drop it, click on the right mouse button and the component is now here. You can move the component by click and hold the left mouse button and select and you'll be able to move it. As you move it, you're actually only moving it on the plane that's parallel to the viewing plane. So you can't move it back because it looks like you're moving back, but you're actually just moving up. If you want to move it in another direction, you have to change your view, then move it that way. To rotate the component, right click on the part and then move your mouse and the component will move in that 3D space. So you can move it around until you find more or less where it's going to go. A lot of times when you go into place mates on these, it's easier to already have the basic direction and everything defined to the part before you start to mate it. So we can start adding the rest of the components, like the cap, the screw. We can do all these the same way. You just drag them in, drop them the handle and we'll go ahead and do the last just the screw once you have your components in here then you can just start mating them up so just to get an idea okay we want this to be here this is going to fall in here so just get a general idea now this cap here, there's actually going to be two caps, one on each side of this. So rather than reinserting this cap, we can actually make a copy of it. If you hold the control key on your keyboard and select that cap, click and hold the left mouse button, and then just drag it away, you'll see a copy created. Once you release your left mouse button, you have two instances. So there's that one component. At this point, I'm just going to stop at this and we'll go through it and add mates later. However, there's one last thing we wanna do. We actually wanna create a sub-assembly of the shaft and one of the end caps. Because during the assembly process, these are probably already pressed together. And it just makes it easy for the person that's actually doing the assembly to grab these from a box and then just shove them in there and then throw the second cap on there. So we'll create a sub-assembly we could have created a separate assembly file, add these components, made them up, save that assembly, and then insert it into this assembly. But that's just an unnecessary extra step. Instead, what we can do is select the handle and the cap by hitting Control or Shift and select both of them in the Feature Manager. Right click. If you don't see, expand out the menu and select Form New Subassembly here. What that does, it creates a virtual component, virtual subassembly that contains both of these. Then at this point, you can save that as a part in an external file, or you can keep the virtual subassembly as it is. So as you see, now that these components are in a subassembly, even though they're not mated to each other, they move together because it is a fixed assembly. If we want them to move separately from each other, we can select on the components, say component properties, and solve it as a flexible component. So even though this isn't a sub-assembly, the components will move individually. The icon will change to show that it's in a flexible assembly. Right-click component properties and we can make it rigid again. Granted, this is not the perfect case for using a rigid or flexible subassembly because naturally these are meant to be mated together. But it comes in handy for other subassemblies that there is movement that still needs to be able to be done in the upper assemblies. If at some point later on down the road you decide that this subassembly no longer should be a subassembly and actually these parts will be part of this top assembly, go right click, expand out the list and say dissolve subassembly. This will bring the parts back up to the same level as your assembly. So that's a quick and dirty way to build an assembly using the bottom up design method. The top down, I'm not gonna show because pretty much we went over that where you just build the components in context of the assembly. 
Now it's on to mates where we'll take a look on how to finalize your assembly by mating the components together.